I'm Nathan Ponchard, this is Chasing Cars, and this is the 2022 911 GT3. It is not only 17 and a half seconds faster than the previous GT3, it's actually marginally faster than the previous GT3 RS. And this is just the normal GT3, which is kind of speaks volumes about just how all the little incremental changes in this car have made it that much better. Now, it's pretty obvious that this isn't just your standard 911 Carrera from the front. More so than any other model, it looks significantly different. It has this whole new front bar area with these big air intakes here, but it also has air extractor vents here to sort of flow air over the body and run air through that radiator at the front to make this the most track honed 911 for the road, albeit it's all about the track really, let's be honest. Among the other changes to the car to make the new GT3 that much more special is that it's the first Porsche road car to have double wishbone front suspension with the front spring struts angled a little bit backwards to make it handle sort of racetrack stresses that much better. It's based upon the 2017 Le Mans class winning 911 RSR. So this truly is racetrack stuff for the road. This car here is fitted with these center lock alloys at the front, they're 20 inch satin black ones, which are optional though finish with nine and a half inch wide rim width, which is half an inch wider than before. At the back, we have 21 by 12s. So this has a stance on the road. Underneath, it has the sport chassis, which is 20 millimeters lower than a normal 911 Carrera, but it's so much more than just those little bits and pieces that make this car special. It does have standard rear wheel steering, which isn't really standard, let's be honest. And it has brand new front brakes. These are now 408 millimeter diameter drill discs, which is the stock brake. They don't normally run carbons are standard in a car like this because apparently the guys who drive these especially in Australia definitely take it to a racetrack or pretty much and they would rather replace a steel disc than a carbon ceramic one. On that point I should actually mention that the GT3 takes quite a considerable amount of percentage of 911 sales in Australia. It's more of a seller than the 911 Turbo because our road limits are so minuscule that having a car like this on the road isn't really even close to getting to its potential. It's all about driving on a racetrack. And so that's why so many Australian GT3 owners come to a place like this, Sydney Motorsport Park. Now, this particular car does have quite a lot of options, which is probably not surprising for a Porsche press car. Standard, the GT3 is $369,600, but this particular car here has enough options to go to $429,590, which is a pretty considerable wedge. Now, I'll just point out a couple of things that it has as options, and I'll know the price of some of them, but not all of them. One of them is this beautiful shark blue paint, which I love, which is $7,500. A similar amount is the carbon fiber roof this car had, which is $7,470. These headlights are also optional. They are LED matrix with the Porsche dynamic lighting system, which means they're adaptive and follow the wheels and turn in with the car. But they also have this cute little shark blue rim around them which i think is adorable because i love this color you also have shark blue around these center lock alloys as well and that sort of theme continues inside the car it even has shark blue seat belts these carbon fiber mirrors here on the side are optional and we also have a couple of other optional things at the back of the car this gt3 also has porsche exclusive rear lighting so it has this sort of clear panel across the back here instead of red but what is most obvious in the new gt3 is this swan neck rear wing. Now this is race car inspired, pretty obviously. It has 50% more downforce than the rear wing of the previous model, but it also has four manual adjustments. And in the performance setting, it actually has 150% more downforce at 200 kilometers an hour, which is pretty damn impressive. We also have 10 millimeter wider rear tires here. In this case, these amazing Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 31530 ZR21. So in the dry, at least, there's never any question about how much traction this rear engine 911 has. As with any 911 though, what's under here is what makes the car really. It's a four liter flat six, just like before, 
It now has 375 kilowatts at 8,400 RPM and 460 Newton meters at 6,100. Still with a 9,000 RPM red line and all of that makes this the fastest GT3 of all time. Now, this car here is a PDK. It also only has seven gears though. So unlike the new 911 that has an eight-speed automatic, the GT3 has a seven-speed PDK because it actually saves weight. And that's really what the GT3 ethos is all about. Among those things, it also has a new exhaust system that saves 10 kilos. But I should also point out that the two only real changes between this and a Porsche Carrera Cup car is that exhaust system and the ECU tune. That's how close this is to a race car. Inside the new GT3, it's just as beautiful as any other 992 series 911 because it mixes elements of an analog past with a clearly digital future. Now, right in front of me is a 9000 redlined analog tachometer, which is perfectly positioned and beautiful with all these little yellow etchings and sounds like that when you rev it. We have the gear indicator here for the PDK in the car and screens that you can adjust to whatever. Now this interior here has two quite considerable options. Both of them are just over $11,000. One of them is an extended leather interior which means it has leather all along the top of the dash here and along the doors with this shark blue stitching which is really cool. Same with this Alcantara with more shark blue stitching around the gear knob and which I should point out looks very much like a manual transmission one. The button at the top is for changing gears in the straight up and down PDK gate. The other option is these fixed race bucket seats which are again just over $11,000. They have this sort of lovely mix of, I think it's called race text, which means it's not leather, and Alcantara perforated in the middle with little shark blue dots in the center of it. We only have manual fore aft adjustment, but we do have an electric little button here on the side for shorter people to help to be able to see over this beautiful view ahead. Also have a full Alcantara steering wheel with shark blue stitching. And this generation of GT3 is the first one to actually have a drive mode on the steering wheel. It has three modes, normal, sport, and a new one called track, which as it may sound, completely hones the whole car to make it absolutely awesome at a place like this. Other cute little features in this GT3 include this optional sort of glossy carbon fiber finish that runs along here. We also have an optional Bose stereo that has a pair of USB-C ports hidden in back here and has pretty decent sound for a car that needs it because you need to overcome the sound of the engine. And we have all of this beautiful Alcantara that runs all the way along the dash, even over the little push out cup holders that are at the end here, which is kind of cute. Now this car includes a no cost option club sport package that includes the sort of stuff that the person who would buy a GT3 would really value. And that includes these six point harness seat belts, this sort of part roll cage thing at the back here. We have a battery disconnect switch and we have a fire extinguisher bolted on the floor here. So that kind of shows the sort of focus of the person that would buy a car like this. As for the way that you sit in this vehicle, it doesn't have a rear seat, obviously it's just got carpeted sections in there, but you could shove holiday gear in behind that cage, I'm sure. This seat here is fixed, but it's actually really comfortable. I find that it's nicely huggy without being too much, but I think if you're a larger framed person than I, then you might struggle a little bit. We have little padded sections along here, all with Alcantara and stitching for your leg to brace against when you're driving at somewhere like Eastern Creek Raceway. And you have just this awesome 911-esque view. Like this feels identifiably 911, like a whole multitude of generations leading up to this car, but none of them have ever been as cool as the interior of this. The combined fuel consumption figure for the Porsche 911 GT3 is 12.6 litres per 100 kilometres. However, we did not test its real world consumption figure because we've been fanging it around a track all day. Its warranty is three years or unlimited kilometres, but that also includes a three year paint warranty and a 12 year anti-rust warranty. The servicing for the car is every 12 months or 20,000 kilometres. So it's all well and good to look at the outside of the GT3, but here is where you really want to be sitting. It's such a great car to drive. Now, I'm not wearing a helmet right now, so I'm not doing the speeds that this car is capable of around Eastern Creek Raceway, but it challenges you in a way that's different from older 911s. I think that because the limits of this car are now just so high, 
with that bespoke front suspension and with the rear axle steering and torque vectoring and those amazing tyres and those massive brakes and that phenomenal engine. Uh, the 0 to 100 claim for this is 3.4 seconds, which is faster than 911 turbos of 20 years ago. In fact, it smashes the top speed of a 911 turbo of the early 2000s, which was only only 305. It's now 318 for the manual, 320 for this seven-speed PDK. So there's just a level of ability that is so far beyond probably what most people will be able to pull out of this car that that makes the challenge. It's no longer a car where you need to be cautious of the nose because the rear engine is in the back. It obviously is still part of its character, but it is just so phenomenally competent that you can lean on the dynamics of this thing and really go quite deep into corners that you could never do in the past and just thrill at the experience. Now, the engine at the moment here is in a sort of a standard mode. You can still hear it purring away at the back and we're three and a half thousand revs. It's only got five and a half thousand to go, which is phenomenal. It just keeps giving and giving and giving the more that you ask of it. And because that it's developed for the 911 Cup cars and stuff to just fang around the track, lap after lap after lap, is what makes this engine such a phenomenal piece of work because it's just kind of unbreakable. I feel like if you do break it, then you might be doing it wrong. Or it's a very, very odd example of something that is known for its bulletproof lap after lap after lap nature. Now, the rest of the 911 GT3 is really not unlivable. Like, I know I'm sitting here in a car with a roll cage and with these sort of performance bucket seats, but they're not unlivable. In fact, you could drive around in this every day and you know, in some suburbs, people might think you might look like a bit of a weirdo driving around in your race car Porsche, but at least you're in a Porsche and not in some other sort of trumped up little vehicle. This is the sort of car that could sort of make mincemeat of so many other cars. And then when you flick it to a sportier note, you've got that beautiful, lovely flat six wheel that just kind of say seems to keep getting better and better it's still as good as it's ever been you know it's not something that's been filtered out by modern electronics and regulations it's still there in your face reminding us for now what one of the greatest internal combustion engines still sounds like the beauty of a Porsche GT3 experience is that it has long been a race car for the road, but I don't think that any GT3 has ever quite reached the bandwidth of this car here. But it just has so much dynamic depth that it actually challenges you just to be able to reach that limit, not just to be able to get the best out of it. It is so much more of a car than most people that are ever going to drive it, yet it's also kind of welcoming and relatively forgiving. But not relatively available. Despite the fact that it starts at $370,000, or in this case is just under $430,000, the 911 GT3 is not an easy car to acquire. It's not saying that they're all sold out, but it is not the sort of car you just walk in off the street, flop out a big suitcase full of cash and walk away in. It is something that you kind of need to know how to acquire. But even if you can't afford that quite substantial sum of money, you can experience the new 911 GT3 for real by doing a Porsche track day. Now the day we've done today is a level four master Porsche track day, which is not an affordable day, but also compared to what it would cost to buy a new GT3 and have this car here as the car that you get to drive all day, plus all the tuition and everything, I feel like that is a really good birthday present for someone who is very, very lucky. If you haven't subscribed, please do so below the video. Hit the notification bell and leave a comment on this beautiful Shark Blue 2022 911 GT3 or on Chasing Cars. Thanks for watching.